I, I've had this stuff kind of in my back pocket for a while now. Um, this it's a uh, this book, One Dirty Tree by you notice the name there. Mm-hmm. Oh, Noah Van Skyver. You know who that guy is? That's Ethan. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and and it's about a uh, you know Noah's uh, their whole family. There's like several of the siblings. Um, how they grew up. Part of it's about how they grew up and whatnot, and most of it has nothing to do with Ethan. But there is a, a, a portion of it that is about their childhood, and you can kind of glean a good bit about why Ethan is the way he is. Because it, it's just like holy shit, it, it kind of all makes sense uh, in a in a you know weird psychological way, I guess. Um, okay, here it is where uh, Noah is describing, uh, you know, like the the living situation. And they, you know, the boys shared a room. Most of the boys, I think, shared a room in the house. Uh, they lived in New Jersey in a kind of dilapidated house. The, the book's called One Dirty Tree because their address was 133. And then the blank, they don't say the name of the street. Uh, understandable. Uh, you know, but like there's also an old dead tree in the front yard. So they thought it was clever. And it is kind of funny. One one dirty tree, right? Um, so, Yeah. 90s Ethan character art caricature artist at Cherry Hill Mall and uh, at home he would work on his first comic book Cyber Frog which if you don't know that's a cr- character he created in the 90s he's had that since then and he you know published it under Harris Comics back then uh, once he got his first uh, you know real gig going uh, before he got you know got got in with DC and Marvel and whatnot for a little while um so yeah he drew a lot there's that Apparently he had a goth girlfriend give him gifts like spiderweb made from wire and photos of dead animals. Cool shit. So their dad uh, was bipolar, is bipolar, I suppose. Um, and, you know, I'm not like talking shit on that or anything. It's just fact. And um, he was apparently occasionally bu- abusive. Um, but also, you know, they seem to have some like some, as it says here, art besides the study of God's word as in Mormonism were the only things encouraged in their family. So, I always forget that that they they were Mormons. Uh, yeah. Growing up. Um, so then this starts to paint more of a picture. Uh, that's like, oh, okay. So they were very poor because, like I said, uh, dad was bipolar. He couldn't maintain a job or anything. Um, they they for whatever reason kept dirty dishes in the bathtub. Weird. Um, you know, so it's like they had to clean out the dirty dishes or any time they needed to take a bath, which I imagine wasn't every day or anything. Um. They had splinters in the floor. They would get like these big shards of wood in their feet that their dad would have to, you know, pull out with uh, tweezers. Uh, there was definitely looks at least so that with Noah being the younger brother, Ethan was older. I think Ethan might be the oldest one or the second oldest. Uh, but this this one, you know, was doing some abuse there too. Uh, so there's you know there's abuse. Um, How many kids were in the family? Uh, there was a I lot think of siblings or six or seven maybe. So, in fact, all of the males in my family read comics. So, that kind of tells me that that might be why, like, he thinks that comics are just for boys. Right. And it's like he just never updated that. He never, like, <laughs> you know, I don't know. He never updated that view. Uh, and I posted on Twitter the other day whenever I was pissed after seeing that clip. I said, you know, that's probably why he thinks that. And I was like, I wonder if he still keeps his dirty dishes in the bathtub, too. You know what I mean? Just like yeah. if, if he hasn't updated that, how, what else is he just kind of carrying over from childhood that he hasn't kind of like consciously made effort to to grow beyond? Um, but, but then also the fact that like he's obsessed with talking about how rich he has gotten from uh, doing Cyber Frog, right? Uh, he talks about that quite a bit, uh, even though he also will <laughs> talk about how he needs to work. Right. Yeah. So this is. I saw this. I saw this on Twitter. Yeah. And it's like, which one's true? It's like sure. He doesn't need to work anymore. He's already worth several million dollars, but he's also for hire with a family to feed. So. Mm -hmm. So I mean, I think the 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 reality probably is is he's not rich. He's probably not like poor or anything. But like, I think the psychology of growing up poor, uh, the way that he did, makes him need feel the need to present himself as being rich, right? Right. Um, even though really he's just like most people, he's got to fucking work for a living. Um, if you want to call what he does working, whatever, but he's, he's getting income that he needs. Um, 
I don't know. I just that's kind of what I've put together is like a, a little psychological profile of them. Um, just because I really like to understand how somebody like this, why somebody like him is the way that he is, right? I saw um I'm gonna share this to the screen as well. I saw this on Twitter. So this is talking about uh comics gate comics and where they are right now. Oh uh EVS Cyberfrog 2 Rec Planet unofficially 36 months late from November 2020 to officially 31 months late. The bridge is burnt, went and back a book from Infachat Kirby, came back from the dead, and did a cyber frog issue. Uh, Peregrine Wings of the Falcon is 30 months late fulfilling. May 21st had to chase had to chase up shipping on 6 8 2022. Left comment on 6 9 2022. Uh 21 4 23. I'm guessing it's this person uh is in the UK because it's doing uh the dates are different from where we do. I think it's 4 21 23. So no signs of the book, likely a failure, and I'll never see the book. Rock and Roll Ninja 1 production delay 30 months late. Oh, December 2021, February 2022, right. 17 months late new. Shipping date 16 months late due for 2022. Printing apparently as of November 2023. Um, Wonder Island uh, production time coloring lettering is late. Jawbreakers forever 12 months late. Will never black back splatter comics ever again. Crash the system due August 2023 in production one month late. The Good Night Paradise Lost number two planned to ship on November 2023. We still don't know because I have no idea. This this was updated like a week ago. So uh, Dino King they say it's going to ship in December. Uh, Terra Olympus planned to ship October 2024. Probably exceed expectations. Still in production. Black Hops production ships January 2024. And Art of Vinny Tartamella shipping soon. So if you look there, there's not a good track record of like Comic Skate Comics um, being released. Yeah, that's uh, just kind of like time. I mean that's just just one of the things that is associated with them uh, for if you if you kind of follow them a little and that's why like that's why actually Eric July sticks out right yeah um I think that's part of why he wanted to be not Comicscape but Ripiverse it's like he recognized and it and it does kind of lean me more towards maybe he had some seed money going into it right because he's the only one of these guys that as far as I know the only one that got the comics made before he started selling them right. Uh, and that's why he'll they'll like correct you if you say that he did crowdfund. It wasn't a crowdfunding, you know, it was a pre-sale. Um, and the weird thing is that if you look at these comics, I mean, the ones at the top that are extremely late are some of the bigger creators in the comic skate space that, that are just delayed on everything. Yep. Um, 36 months late. Holy shit. Yeah. How do you keep fans being that far behind on a comic book? Because he streams and he talks about SJ because it's, you know, he said it himself. I have that clip of it. I'll pull it up in a second. But yeah, like yeah. He, said it, he said it to you. But I mean, the point of the matter is, again, like it really is just about supporting creators that you like. And if you want to give Eric July $100 a month, it doesn't really matter like what comes with it. It's you're just sponsoring him to continue yelling about the whole ass roads. Um, yeah. You know, it's not really about the, the comic or the product. It's just about supporting him to, you know, he was talking about Eric July, but you can apply it to him as well. You know, uh, he's to hear him bitch about the ho ass roads. And, and, you know, I'm, I'm not going to sing praises of Eric July because we know I don't like him at all. I have zero, mm -hmm. <laughs> zero uh, <laughs> positive about Eric July. But I will say in terms of like getting the comic out. And making sure that that they're that the customers are getting their products. I have nothing negative to say about that. I feel like Dang. that part of the Ripperverse is is done in a way that I think the customers do get the, the products they're looking for. And that is a positive for the people that are buying it. Um, you know, it doesn't change my opinion of him as a person, but uh th this is un this is just completely unacceptable. I mean, if you're crowdfunding something and there's a delay, I can understand a slight delay, but 36 months, there's, I, I mean, I would never, that would happen to me one time and I would never back somebody from that community again if, if the comic was that late. Just not, I would not, I wouldn't trust it. Um, and all the stuff in the green here that I uh, that is coming out soon, I'm guessing when this person updates this next year, they'll, it'll probably be a similar situation where all this stuff is delayed and pushed back and People are waiting It'll for it. It'll still be coming soon. Yeah, pretty much. Um, I'm not even familiar with all of these, but I know that even some other projects that Ethan has been working on are, are delayed that have they haven't come out yet. Um, so, well, at least he got his uh the, that project he was doing with the uh, with the sex trafficker. He got that done. Oh, that was a quick one, and you could tell that cover. <laughs> yeah, you I mean, could tell. You could tell that was a quick one. Um, uh. <laughs> I can't believe he's been working on Cyberfrog since the 90s. Like that, 
or since he was a kid, I guess. Um, yeah, he's a character he created as a teenager, basically. It, it's almost kind of like a, you know, no wonder it feels like a win to him, right? Because like he just happened to have this. I mean, that's totally clearly a character created like in whenever in the nineties when when the Ninja Turtles were fucking big and you even had Battle Toads already and shit, you know, and Cyber Frog is very clearly inspired by that era of you know uh, anthropomorphic fucking reptile warriors, whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, and he happened to have that and I'm sure he probably never would have given a shit about it except for he got fucking fired from DC for running his mouth and being a bigot and an asshole way too many times, you know? And so like, basically he, it seems like he just realized, Oh shit, I, my, my dream career is over. Like I, I got into, I was working for DC comics. Like that was my dream and now it's done. I fucked it up. Or except he probably didn't re- accept that he fucked it up. Um, and I think then he Cyber goes, Frog is in the '90s, set in the '90s too. If I, yeah. if I and he, he was like, "Well, what do I, what do I do? What? Do, oh, oh, you know what? I do have a creator-owned character from, you know, when I was a fucking teenager, right?" <laughs>